This is the worm tower, more specifically the abandoned worm tower. And this is the worm sludge at the bottom of the worm tower in the sump. And this is pretty much the untouched working tray. So let's rescue this worm tower now. For various reasons, some of them to do with health, I've not been able to look after this tower the way it should have been looked after. And as you know, the this tower lives outside and it's pretty much exposed to the elements 24-7 and it's not protected. So I suspect on this occasion, a contributing factor to why there's so many worms in the sump and not actually in the working tray is they've been moving down through the layers to try and get out of the cold at the surface so that could be one reason but as you can see it's, it's pretty much a, a worm sludge in the sump and if we look over here to the tray number one which was the first tray that we filled uh, with food scraps that's been broken down lovely it's full of springtails but that doesn't cause me a problem uh, it, the tray lives outside so they'll just carry on composting away they're good things to have in your bin there's a few little worms there, and that's a juvenile. I suspect that was a late cocoon to hatch. But as you can see, most of the worms are gone from this tray, which is as it should be. The idea of the worm tower is that the worms will start in the working tray, which is tray one, and then as you add more trays, they'll finish composting in your first tray and move up through the holes at the bottom into your second tray. So that's done really well, that first tray, and that's that's lovely finished vermicompost. This is the second tray which is almost broken down. There's still quite a bit to go. You can still see some well-formed leaves there and some bits of scraps and there's some worms in there. So from that you could theorize that now most of the worms are actually in the working tray but as you saw that's not the case. They're actually in the sump. So we're going to have to do something about that. This is still pretty rough. There's a, there's a lot of um, composting yet to go, really, in the second tray. And again, it's full of springtails. And as, as long as they're not, I mean, literal swarms of springtails, they don't cause the worms any problem. So, and again, because this tray is outside, I'm, I'm not bothered. And this is the top tray. Now, take a good look at this, because this is exactly the way you shouldn't be feeding a worm tower. <laughs> A uh, case of do as I say, not as I do. But anyhow, it is what it is for now. We, we're going to, we're going to um, rescue this. So the pieces are not broken down. Um, they should be chopped up small. They're not. They've just literally been dumped in at the top. And as you can see, a lot of that will take a very, very long time to break down. It's not attractive to the worms. Most of them are down here in the sump. So it says something about the state of my top tray that the worms actually prefer sodden cardboard in the sump to working at the top tray. But anyhow, so what are we going to do about it? Well, in this case, I've cleared the sump out and I'm going to add a layer of horse manure. I'm just going to take out some of the bit of bits of weed there. So instead of a, a cardboard layer in the sump on this occasion, I'm going to use a bit of horse manure because I happen to have plenty of that at the moment. That's tray one and tray two back in place. There's a little isopod there doing its thing, which is always good to see, especially when I've got leaves that need breaking down. And now we need to do something about this. Well, the question is what? So I've removed most of the content of the working tray. Excuse me. There's just a thin layer of leaves at the bottom and a few worms. Nothing like the numbers that there should be. And on to this very thin layer of very wet leaves. I'm going to add a very thin layer of horse manure. You guessed it. So that will make a nice bedding now for them and it'll be quite attractive to pull the worms up through the second tray when they're good and ready. And now we need to deal with this um, sludge of worms. Now there's a couple of ways that you can deal with this. Um, I could take this uh, lump and I could put it under strong lights. That will force the worms down. I could literally sift through it. Because it's cardboard and uh, it really is... Just, I don't know what the word is, 
sludge. The um, I could put this into a sieve and blast it with a hose, and that will actually force out most of the cardboard, leaving most of the worms in the sieve. That's a quick way, but I don't want to traumatise my little worms. They've been through enough. That they've been pulled out of the sump. So what I'm going to do is we've got sort of weak winter sun here at the moment. So I'm just going to, I'm not in any great hurry. So I'm going to layer this uh, mess on top of a sheet of cardboard and the light will for, force the worms down. And as you can see, they have already started to make their way out of the mess and they'll find their way into the horse manure and the leaves. I'm not in any rush for this, so this will take literally the entire afternoon because the sun isn't particularly strong. If this was a summer's afternoon, it would be the process would be a lot quicker. But they are going to slowly just make their way out of the sludge to get away from the light and into the bedding below. And I'm going to help them along. Because as time has gone by, so you, you have to remember now the clips that you're seeing now have been there's been uh, an hour or more in between these bits uh, most these are worms now that have tried to get down into the bottom away from the light and i can just easily pick them out get them onto the bedding and then i'm going to roll the lump the mud ball over flattening it down a little bit and let the worms let the light drive the worms down to the bottom and just really rinse and repeat for the next couple of hours we're coming to the end now so that worked very well it was very gentle on the worms no great rush we're doing this in worm time and they're now pretty much all gone so I've got the um, sludgy cardboard there, which I'll, I'll separate into a pot. Now there is a very few um, little baby worms still in that mess, so don't worry about them. They're going to go into one of the other worm bins, so they, they won't be lost. And there's so few worms left in that now, and there's such a small amount. I'm, all I'm going to do is just fold this cardboard over, and I'm going to leave it in the bin, because it, it won't cause a problem there. And this is the goop which will go into one of the other worm bins. Probably one of the very big ones, so it, it, it won't be an issue. It'll just sit in a corner and the worms, any worms that are in there, there's one guy there. They'll make their way out of that and into the more attractive surroundings. So that's most of the stuff removed. I've added a few handfuls into this 10 litre bucket and using my trusty garden shears I've chopped it all up very small now again ideally you know the system I was intending to use with this and did use for for a good lot of last year which is the freeze and thaw method uh, I'm not doing it on this occasion I'm just going to take that as it is now chopping it up like that means it will break down an awful lot quicker because we've increased the surface area so there's much more area for the bacteria to attack and start breaking things down and the worms can then move in and get the bacteria so we'll see a monumental increase very quickly in the amount of bacteria in this bin, making the worms much happier and hopefully uh, making that top tray much more attractive for the worms. So I've just covered it with a layer of cardboard. It'll help absorb the moisture. That food scraps that I've chopped up with the shears, that's sitting on a layer of cardboard because that will absorb some of the moisture. Because again, we didn't drain any moisture out of that and I don't want to add particularly add a lot more moisture to the bin. These are the guys going off now to be rehomed into another bin just cleaning the roof and that's the tower rescued i hope so the proof of the pudding is in the eating as they say so let's come back tomorrow and have a look and hopefully we should have more worms at the top and as if by magic it's the next day so probably about 18 hours later you see masses of springtails there on the cardboard I like these little guys. They don't. They honestly don't cause the worms any problems. I know people don't like bugs in their bins and whatever, but they're great composters. Uh, I'll do a one minute with the composter on these guys soon. But what we're after now is to find out, are there more worms in that top tray? Or have they all abandoned it and gone down into the sump? Now, this is the stuff we added yesterday sitting on the layer of cardboard. And as you can see, the worms are quite happy there now in that top tray. I haven't made any real effort to try and go down. 
bedding is much better for them with the added horse manure so they'll be happy in that the temperatures have warmed up a little bit as well so that will be another factor in keeping them at the top so yeah i'm very pleased with that i think this is going to work now so it would be fair to say that we've rejuvenated this tower and we'll come back in about two weeks and have a look at it and see how the guys are doing then. I hope this finds you all well. I'm sorry for the hiatus in posting, but I'm still struggling with a couple of issues. I'm hoping now that I'll be able to upload more regularly. And that's what the Worm Tower looks like, February 19. As always, thanks for watching. And hopefully I'll be able to get to post an update soon. Bye for now.